Hello all my crafty people out there. We're doing something a little different today. Um, when the sunlight comes in my window here, it is distracting. So we're gonna give it a try from this angle and see how we do. Uh, today's project uh, is going to be interesting, I hope, and something that some of you have been asking for regarding sleeves. So we're gonna give that a try. Uh, I'm not wearing any today. <laughs> Anyway, if you haven't been here before, my name is Stephanie and I upcycle clothing, generally thrifted items from my local stores. So we make um, new clothes or accessories. And this week we're going to be doing a shirt. And when I say, well, it's more of a blouse, if there's a difference. It's a woman's blouse and it's this black shirt. And there's a lot of it. It's, it's, it's a 20, uh, size 20. I don't know what that means. Modena Classic Fit. Um, hopefully I'm not butchering that. So, as you can see, there's plenty of fabric here to work with. And we're gonna make something today with sleeves and we're not going to be just using the sleeves that are here. We're going to use the fabric in them, but we're going to make puffy sleeves. Now, I found a pattern that it looks like it was from my childhood. Um, it's a new look. It's uh, 6707. I'll show that up to y'all closer later. But um, it's it's a very classic look. I'm not going to do the collar. I'm not doing a collar. But I am going to do the sleeves and make them a little puffy because that seems to be the thing down here. Now, this is black and we're in the lovely uh, heat of the summer down here and will be until like I said somewhere around October but I, I can definitely put this to use and if I if I like it in the black I may make it in some other colors I just I've never worked with just a solid black shirt thought this would be a good idea so um, if you like this kind of content or if you want to give it a try follow along subscribe like share let me know what you think and I'll see you at the table Okay, everybody, I have done the not so fun, boring, tedious part of this, or at least it's to me. Some people may really appreciate this part, but I don't. I traced all of the pieces that we're gonna need and I cut them out. This is the sleeve and this is the body. The only thing that I'm thinking we're gonna have to get kind of creative with is the uh, collar slash lapel area. And the reason I think that's going to be a problem, sorry, my fan's on and it's hot. So I'm gonna put my interfacing over here. Um, the only thing I think we're gonna have a problem with is when we wanna put this um, neckline in, it's got a piece of neckline interfacing that goes around the neck let me see if I can show it to you real quick. And when it goes around the neck, it goes all the way around the neck, whether you have a collar there or not. And that's because you're creating a button placket with that as well. Well, our button placket's already gonna be made because we're gonna keep the original button placket, or at least part of it, for our front. So that might be the only squiffy part we're gonna have to kind of figure out. Again, this is, 6707 and yes that's 99 cents I got these for 99 cents at uh, Hoblob they either they're going out of print or they're going to stop carrying them I'm not sure but I bought quite a few patterns that way so that being said these again are all my pattern pieces we're going to use on the shirt now I know that some people like to do things without patterns and there are things I can do without patterns, but when it comes to sleeves, it's just easier if I've got a pattern. It's it's one less thing I gotta worry about cutting out straight and yeah, whatever. So this is this is a lot of fabric. This is a big shirt. And that's good for us. Because what we're gonna do, that's the collar down there. It doesn't look black, it looks gray on the screen, but I, I swear it's black. Um, 
we're going to use the bottom half of the shirt to make the body of the shirt. Usually I would use the collar area, but the problem is, and I think I've talked to y'all about this before, is if you don't have enough room between that shoulder seam and that seam in the arm to make that curve and that cut, you're just going to be cutting into the sleeve and it makes a mess. So we're actually going to use the bottom just like we would if I was making one of my little uh, dresses for my granddaughter. We're going to use the bottom as the bottom of the shirt and it may allow us to avoid having to take this pocket off. Not sure. We'll see. Y'all are actually seeing this better than I am. I'm going to start cutting up. I'm just going ahead. and This is also a button placket we will not be sewing closed because this blouse will I will be able to utilize or will be utilizing the buttons as they are. So right down the sides. Oh in this shirt I believe I got this second hand at it may have been a Goodwill and if it was a Goodwill it was $4.99 and if it wasn't a Goodwill I don't think I paid much more than that for sure. So I don't like to do much on the on the shirts I know I'm gonna cut up so I'm just gonna determine which side I'm cutting down it doesn't really matter which side of the seam and we're gonna do the traditional cut it up the side cut the sleeves off and then we'll be working with our flat fabric that we can use to um, make our pattern or use to make our shirt with our pattern so I won't torture y'all with this. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna show you this. This is the front of the shirt, and this is our front of our shirt, our blouse, and see our dart and everything. And I think we are going to have to take that pocket off, because if you see, this is where the pocket is right here. Pull it down a little. I've got it pulled over the edge of my table there, because it's a long piece, but you can see the pocket right here. Well. If we're going to put this top, and this would be where the placket would be, we're going to run into this pocket, so I'm going to have to take that off first. Hopefully there's not any dark discoloring. I don't think there is. This shirt looked pretty new. So I'm going to take the pocket off so we can get our this part of the um, shirt up here first. So I will be right back after I take the pocket off, and then we'll keep on cutting. All right, I took the pocket off and I have laid it together, wrong size together, but it wouldn't matter, but wrong size together just seems to work a little better. And I've folded it at the placket, at the button placket, and made sure that I didn't have any excess fabric, my hem lines meet. Um, so I'm gonna, because I'm gonna use the natural hem, <laughs> the natural hem, the hem that I've give, I've been given on the shirt, just like I would on those, um, those little dresses that I make for uh, my granddaughter. So that being said, we're going to put this down, and I'm gonna make sure that this is still even. I think that's good. I'm going to pin this down and I'm going to cut it out and then we'll cut out the back from the other side. And by the way, whew, I don't know what he was carrying in his pocket, but I had to get the lint roller out. So let me pin this down and cut this out. Okay, I want to show y'all one little 
tricky thing about this, and it's the same way with the dresses. If you want this side seam here to meet on your front and your back here, you'll notice we have this little bit left over off of the hem of the shirt in the front. This hem has to match this hem, and you can use, I used the edge there, but also I used the darts. This one happens to have darts on the side, most patterns will, but you can see how these two darts, well, you may not be able to see, but these two darts line up, and then the hem here matches as well. So you won't have any excess left over on the side of your hem. Now, if you want excess, that's fine, you can do that. Um, I just want these two hem lines to meet, uh, so that's what I had to make that adjustment, and that means that there's a little bit hanging off the edge in the back, which that's fine. It's not a, I mean, I'm, I'm a short person. You could do it the opposite way, where you could pull this up higher, and then you could align this with that, using that dart as well, where you have a longer shirt. Same concept. I just happen to be altitudely challenged, so it works better if I make it a little shorter. But I do the same thing with the, the dresses uh, to meet the side seams uh, with the hems that are already there on the shirts. So I'm going to cut this out and then I think we're going to start discussing that collar piece. Okay, I want to go over something with you and this is my thought process. And I wish there was some way for you to communicate through this video, <laughs> but I'm not live. Okay. We need to encase the raw edge of this collar and we don't need to continue that encasement by using this because this creates the button placket which we already have. For once that's a complication. So what I'm thinking, this is the collar, you see how it goes all the way down like that. What I'm thinking is if I, I'm just folding it right now, but if I cut it off here and I still use the rest of it, which I've got the other that goes on the back, this is enough for the seam allowance right there. And I can still sew it on here, but when it comes down to here, if I cut it off at this angle, I can hand stitch it onto the plackets that are already there. And that way it'll stay down, but it'll also finish the edge and give that stability to the collar. That's the process I'm thinking about. Let's see if it works. Again, this is my whole piece, and I'm thinking if I cut it off at an angle. So I'm going to do something brave because this is a tracing, so I can go back to the original piece if I need to. And I'm just going to cut it off right there. So we're going to have this piece along with the other, oh, I've got another piece over here that's the rest of the back of the neck. But we're only going to be sewing here and not down here. And that way this piece can just be tacked down behind that button and that first buttonhole to hold it in place. I may even, when I put the interfacing together with it, I may put a seam in there and I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see. But I'll finish that edge somehow where it won't be uh, likely to fray or cause a problem. I just wanted to say, show y'all what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, let's transfer these darts. And the best way I know how to do it without some really extra stuff, like that chalk paper, which I've tried, not really good at it. Now, this is right sides out right now, as you can see the buttons. So I'm going to fold it the other way, right sides in, okay? And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to line it up. I am going to transfer 
So now we've got the outside, or the, I'm sorry, the inside facing out. And make sure we got them all lined up on the sides here. All right. I'm going to take my pattern. Actually, I'm, I think I'm going to lay it on the other side. There we go. Again, just checking to make sure everything's lined up. Show y'all this way because this one you can see there how it's written on there. Now, what I have done it's kind of the same way I did the other day with the finding the dart on one side. I'm putting a pen in, and I'm gonna put a pen in at the point. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it over. And I know at that beginning, right there where that pen goes in, is the beginning of my dart, and this is this one. And that one's easy because the angle of the fabric. So you can see the angle of this side to know. So I'm going to draw a line from it to where my pen enters my fabric over here, like that. And then I'm going to draw one from there to where this pen enters the fabric on the other line. And that is an easy way to draw your dart. Now, if you're good, which we'll have to see if I am, we will turn it out like this. And you will bring this over carefully, bring this over, and try to line it up before you sit it down. And just rub it. And there is your mark on the other side. And you can make it a little darker, obviously but you've got the basic line there already. Like that. So now your darts are drawn. Pretty easy to go over there and pinch these together. Of course, pinching um, right sides together. We're going to sew from that corner down to where those two sides meet, those two lines meet. And that'll be our darts. All right, I wanted to show y'all something with this white board behind it so you can see the black shirt. Y'all see it a little clearer than I do as far as the black on black. It looks more gray on the screen. But here's our little complication. Here's our lining. And shoulders meet shoulders fine on the top around the back of the neck. But when then you come down here, the problem is you've got too much placket already in existence. So it comes short. So if you meet your seams up here at the top, it comes short about that much from coming to the edge of the uh, already existing placket. And that's just because that's excess fabric. When you cut it and you fold it and you cut it, it's it's got both sides of that to take into account. Now, what you could do is you could extend this lining piece or you could make do like I'm going to. I'm going to put the lining on and I'm going to put it on with a serger, I think. I'm hoping that's the way I'm going to do it. And when I put it on, I'm going to go over this line and over this line. And that way, when I turn this in, I'll still have that serger line to kind of fold that under and catch that, and it'll still keep a clean edge. It'll, keep a, it'll make a clean edge. It won't be as bulky as the rest of the collar, but this will stabilize the rest of the collar. So when I turn it in, and again, I turn that down, and then I'm going to go back and top stitch around the neck. Okay, I wanted to show y'all I was going to serge this collar on, but first I wanted to show y'all that I did 
um, do a little stay stitching around. And I started from the middle of the back of the collar. You can see where I started both places. And I went this way, and then I went this way. And the reason I did that is so I would make sure that my seams stayed lined up. Sometimes when you start from one side and go to the other, your seams get all wacky. So I started from the center of the back, went down, and then went down this way. And that's also just going to give me a good stable line for when I'm serging because I want to catch the end of this where it doesn't quite meet the placket. Okay, I'm actually really excited the way that turned out. I just wanted to show y'all from this angle. The line is nice and clean. I've pressed the lining into the inside of the shirt. And um, as I was hoping, the serge line just finished off that edge so I could fold it under. And now, short of the serge line there, I'm gonna go and top stitch all the way around the collar to tack down this lining and these little ends that are just surged and that's going to finish off my edges all the way around my collar actually rather nicely all right everybody we got kind of lucky i was thinking i might have to do an insert in this sleeve to make it wider to accommodate this sleeve but it's really not that bad this is a pretty big sleeve and the teeny little bit let me see if I can get a ruler and just kind of show you that I'm going to have to alter off. I, I'm not going to worry about that. That's not, what is that, a half inch? A little more than a half inch on both sides. So essentially what's going to happen is the shirt arm is going to taper in a little, but this is already a gathered edge. So I, I don't think we're going to be causing any major hiccups there. And again, I'm just pinning on the sleeve to the sleeve and we're going to use the fabric that's here but there should be enough to make our puff because see this this part that goes into the sleeve hole is all there it's not being altered at all so we won't have any complications there All right, everybody, we come to the most challenging part for me so far is this sleeve. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can get gathers in a puffy sleeve. Obviously, you can gather them with a gathering stitch. This particular pattern has pleats, which is fine. It's a little more challenging. Uh, so I broke out the original piece of the pattern, and I laid it on here to get the lines transferred. If you start from the middle, the problem is, a lot of times you kind of get messy, but we'll, we'll try it from the middle. And I'll take this pattern out from under here in a minute, but I kind of need it to look at it to make sure I'm pushing the right way. So you're folding on the solid line and you're pushing towards the dotted line. And it makes sense, it does, it's just, um, this doesn't look very neat to me. So uh, this is now this solid line. So it's got to be pushed actually towards this dotted line again because you're making uh, several pleats in the top. So like that. Is there an easier way to do this? Probably. Do I know of one? Not with this pattern. Here are our two sleeves, and you can still see the white marks on the outside. When you do sleeves, make sure, now I marked one side with a back dart on each one. So there's my back dart there. That means the back dart's on this side on this one. Okay? So 
I went ahead and I surged the bottom of my raw edge where my elastic is going to be. You can put a casing on this one, like a binding, but you have to gather the sleeve. And I'm not keen on gathering. <laughs> Just don't. If I can avoid it, I do. Now, if I wanted a really pristine look, I guess I could go with that. But I, 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 I think gathers are fine with a elastic. So I surged the edges and then I turned under the hem by one and a half inches. I mean, not one half inch, three quarters inch, because I'm only going to use quarter inch elastic. So three quarters an inch, and, and the majority of that is the surge line. So I'm going to uh, sew right along the surge line. I also tacked these down just to put a paste, basting stitch across the top of these pleats so they'd stay in place and I wouldn't have any trouble from them. And in the instructions, they want you to close this up, then create the casing, and then put the sleeve in. We're going to put the sleeve in. I've already created the casing and what I'll do is I will run the elastic through this before we sew up the side. But I'll tack down my elastic on one side, run it for here and tack it down here. So when I close it up by running up the sides and the sleeve, I'll catch it all. So let me go put, actually I'm going to go sew down this serge line first just to finish the casing. And then we'll put our sleeves in our shirt and we would sh should be sewing up the sides after that Just fingers crossed y'all know how that goes let me go close up this casing I went ahead and eased the sleeves into the armholes and when I say eased I just pinned them <laughs> But I know that there's a little excess sleeve as opposed to the armhole. You, you might be able to see that line there. And that's okay because of the way we're going to stitch it up, uh, the way we're going to put it together, we're going to make the side seam the last thing we stitch all the way up through the arm, um, the arm seam. And that's, that's fine. And I think I heard one time that you're supposed to have a little bit of extra ease in a sleeve anyway, even if it's not gathered, if it's pleated like this. So no worries. We're going to sew from one side to the other to sew our armhole in. But before, before I do that, I'm, I want to serge it. But before I do that, I'm going to start at the center seam and I'm going to sew down one side and down the other, just a basting stitch. And the reason I'm doing that is when you pin it, it's all well and good, but we all know that when you go to the machine, some things uh, change with the way that um, they ease into each other, especially with two opposing curves like this. So again, I'm going to go from the center seam down one side and then come back to the center seam to the other side, just like I did the collar lining to make sure that this is even. And then uh, we should be able to run our elastic and be on our last leg of the project sewing up the side seams. So let me go to the machine. Again, I'm starting here and going back and forth. Okay, sleeves are in. After I did the basting stitch around the uh, edge, I went ahead and surged it. So those are surged on. That was kind of hairy. You never know, you know, when it's cutting, if you're going to cut the wrong thing, or you catch something. Could have been the whole project. But, I got through it. Now what we're going to do, is we're going to, I measured my upper arm. I'm going to put that amount of elastic into these sleeves at the end. Now, remember, you've got a little overhang from the seam, from the side of the shirt to the side of the sleeve. And what I'm going to do in order to take care of that and not lose any of my bottom elastic is I'm going, when I surge off, when I surge up the side, I'm going to just surge at an angle to catch and cut that off and then catch the, um, the hem where our elastic's going to be. Because I, I don't want to lose any of the, the gather that's going to be obtained with that amount of fabric and that elastic. So, running elastic i got to find my handy dandy safety pin because, you know, that's, that's how you do it. Here's one. So get our safety pin. 
and we're going to run our elastic in each sleeve and this is just quarter inch elastic I didn't want it to be really heavy we're going to run it through each sleeve and when I run it I'm going to do it like I do my little granddaughter's dresses so now the last and final thing I have to do since we kept the original hem on the shirt and everything like that is to right sides together we're going to go right down the side seam so we're going to put our arms together like this again I'm going to start here and I'm going to taper down and cut off this excess and go right down the side and that's going to be it I hope Okay, all my crafty friends, got it all done. I'm actually pretty excited about the turnout. Nice, nice puffy sleeves. Um, kept the original hemline in the shirt. Now, this shirt is a man's shirt, so the buttons are a little sparse. Uh, so I'm probably going to add a button or snap here and here because the girls, you know, they'll get away from you. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I hope this helped somebody, maybe with patterns, altering something, and um, if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, share, let me know what you think, and stay tuned for the winner. Okay, everybody, it is time to pick our winner for our purse. So I've got it all loaded up in the YouTube random comment picker. I've got pocket as our text word unique authors when it started when it ended or when it began and when it ended is backwards and let's see what we get and a little shark fin going across there come on winner 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 and terry's 9798 <laughs> i guess you commented in time you are the winner, and I will be in contact with you to get you your purse. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Y'all have a great day.